Good morning, church. We are so excited you've chosen to join us in worship this morning. My name is Jessica, and I join you each and every week to fill you in on what is happening here at Good Shepherd. Before we head into this hour of worship, I have a few things I would like to share with you. If you are a first-time guest with us and want to connect, there are connect cards in the seat backs in front of you. Take a few minutes to fill a card out and return it to the events table on the church patio. We can't wait to meet you. We are now in the season of Lent, where we reflect on the 40 days Jesus was fasting in the desert and being tempted by Satan. And we are encouraged to live life a little differently during this time as well. As a congregation, we participate in a yearly initiative, Feed the Pig. You may have noticed the little pig envelope in your bulletin. Yes, this is related to what I am talking about. We partner with the organization Three Strand Court to support their Save a Seat program. If each family within our congregation set aside $5 a day during Lent, we could support hundreds of children in Haiti with school tuition, lunches, supplies, and a uniform so they can earn an education of their own. We've created positive lifelong impact in this Haitian neighborhood and invite you to participate in this Lenten discipline so that that impact can spread even further. Our men's ministry is gathering once again for fellowship and breakfast. This is a valuable time for you to connect with your Christian band of brothers, hear an impactful message, and as a bonus, you'll get a delicious breakfast. For our March gathering, we are going to explore what leading organizations and management are doing to set themselves apart in a post-pandemic culture and discuss ways we can incorporate servant leadership into this model. We'll see you there. Following our men's breakfast, all ages 55 and up are invited to join us to assemble hygiene kits for Salvation Army and the Life on the Streets Ministry and fill Easter eggs for Lutheran Social Services and the children living at Camp Pendleton. After serving, we will gather for a social hour and enjoy delicious pizza. We kindly ask that you RSVP to Mary Jacob if you will be joining us. Her contact information can be found in your bulletin. In just a couple weeks, we have an event that is back due to popular demand, our on-campus parent retreat. All parents are invited to an evening of community as we grow, eat, and laugh together. You can expect an inspirational message, time in small groups, delicious appetizers to snack on, and a comedy session. Don't want to deal with finding a babysitter? You don't have to worry. We have a kids' night out event planned for your children at the same time as the retreat. Childcare and youth activities will be provided for birth through eighth Grade. We kindly ask that you register so we can best prepare for the retreat. Beginning March 19th, our Sunday Adult Bible Study is diving into a new book by Max Lucado. We gather weekly on Sunday mornings from 9.10 to 9.50 a.m. in Discovery Room to read, discuss questions, and share our understanding of scripture. The new study is titled Max Lucado's Life Lessons from James. James, the half-brother of Jesus, wasn't impressed with talk. He knew that a life of faith was all about actions that revealed a difference in a person's life. For him, it was not the works that save the Christian, but that they mark the Christian. In his letter, he boldly deals with practical issues of faith not bound by culture or place. He shows us the importance of living a genuine life of faith. His message is bare-knuckled as he encourages, challenges, and confronts, offering practical words and admonitions to live out our faith. We invite you to join us for this study. We're excited to be heading back to Ecuador and Alaska as part of our summer mission trips. Applications are officially live and spots are limited. Opportunities are available for families, students, and adults to participate. So to learn more, head to the events table on the patio. Lastly, after worship together, we are gathering for an afternoon with author and educational speaker, Arlene Pelican, as she shares stories science, and wisdom on how to take back your home from an overdependence on screens. It can be hard for real life to compete with the electronic rewards of screen time, and Arlene has tangible skills to walk alongside parents and grandparents as they learn to navigate our newly screen-driven world. All parents and grandparents are invited to stay in the sanctuary after church, and it's completely free. Following the presentation, our grandparents will be gathering for a social luncheon. If you haven't registered but would like to join us, you are welcome. Thank you all for being here and for listening to today's announcements. You can learn more about all things Good Shepherd by heading to our website, goodshepherdurbine.com. Now let's worship.
we get is only what we ourselves can conjure up. But the scriptures today offer the image of God as our keeper, always helping, always present. Nicodemus has followed all the rules and done everything he can do, and yet he is still looking for love, for a tangible connection with God. Jesus says that he must born of the Spirit. It's not all up to simply doing the right thing. It is about allowing the Spirit to help birth love in our lives. Let us join together in opening our hearts to the love of God. Before we even utter a word, we can be assured God will offer us grace and a way forward. For this reason, we can be honest with what pains us most about our own thoughts and action. Let us pray. Holy and merciful one, in this season of discernment, we come bringing our deepest longings and our failed attempts at satisfying them. We have often looked for love, for acceptance and security in the trappings of notoriety, popularity, and power that diminish others in order to gain for ourselves. We yearn for lives that matter. We desire relationships that thrive. We want less regret. At times, we fail to see that you have already given us what really matter, your love and acceptance. You provide opportunities all around us to make a difference in the lives of others. You give us a fresh start each day, inviting us to do better. In this silence, we bring to you our pleas for openness to a different way of living. My friends, be assured by the psalmist who says, I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Let us respond together. We open our hearts, our minds, 
our souls are fashioned to the ways of love created by God, embodied in Jesus, and already moving in us by the Spirit. We are forgiven, loved, and freed. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always and also with you. Take a moment to share the peace with those around you. Please be seated. From Psalms, I lift, my, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Instead, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Please rise for the gospel. reading from John. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, very truly I tell you, No one can see see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of the water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and and do you not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen. But still, you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, 
so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. seated for the anthem. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. You sent your Son, Jesus. You so love the world that you sent your Son, that whoever believes in him will have life and have life everlasting. We thank you that you have given us this spirit. We thank you, Lord, that we have been born again through water and the word, through baptism, that we are alive and that we can see your work 
with different eyes and a different view, we can see the work of the kingdom. Give us that vision during the, this walk in Lent. And as we look for you and as we look for fulfillment in our lives, may it always be the cross, may it always be Christ, and may it not be what's actually happening or our circumstances or how we feel about life, but it's you, Lord, that our focus is on. Help us to have that and remain there. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We will release uh, those of you who are in pre-K through fifth grade uh, to go to flock, and we'll bring you back in for communion uh, with your parents. So, the sermon series we're in is looking, in lo looking for love in all the wrong places, looking for fulfillment in all the wrong places, looking for meaning, looking for direction, looking for whatever we are looking for, and we end up looking to every place except Jesus. Or at least our first initial shot is doing something, and then maybe we wander back to Jesus. Does that sound like you? A little bit? You run out of all your options and you get back to Jesus. You're like, I should have started with Jesus first. This is what we're talking about. The lesson for today few things I want to talk about and then um, uh, look at what Jesus is really saying. Um, Nicodemus is a member of the Jew Jewish ruling council. There's about 70 people. They are the big wigs. He is a Pharisee. They're very interested in law in terms of if you're going to do religion right, these are all the laws you have to follow. And there's a many law after law after law after law. A quick little story. One of the things is you can't, you know, no, no, you shall do no work on Sunday. The Sunday's the Sabbath, right? What if you need water? Water, getting water out of a, a well is work. What if you tie a bunch of your husband's t-shirts together and put it on a bucket and then put it down in the well and pull it out. That's not work, because it's not a rope. You're not using a rope. And so once you get all these laws, now you have to figure out ways around the laws, okay? And it ends up being a religion that's like, wait a minute. Very interested in the rules. He comes to Jesus at night. Why does he come at night? If you come during the day, people are going to see you. But he's motivated. He wants to know. He is seeing these things. What is he seeing? He says, Rabbi, Rabboni, teacher, we know that you're a teacher that's come from God. No one can perform the miraculous signs you were doing if God were not with him. So he, th he says, God's empowering you. Well, he's going to find out, you know, this Jesus is, is God, all right? And so he's very interested, and Jesus says, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he's born again. You can't see what I'm doing unless you're born again. You can't see that I'm more than just a teacher unless you're born again. And how can a man be born when he is old, Nicodemus asked. Surely he can't enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Oh, sorry, hold on. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless you're born again. How can a man be born when he's old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into the mother's womb to be born. So what's this born again thing, right? Jesus said, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless they're born of water and the spirit. Keep in mind, Jesus has just been baptized. What happens in his baptism? Heavens open up. God is there. This is my son. This is Jesus, water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh. But the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You are born new in baptism through water and the Spirit. You should not be surprised at me saying you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear the sound. You can't tell where it's coming from or where it's going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. You can't tell where, where we're coming from. We can't tell where we're going. But what is, what is the commonality? It's the wind and we're all being blown by this beautiful wind, and in the, in, the, in the Hebrew it's ruach, which is spirit, wind. 
how can this be? I mean, Nicodemus is like, oh, you, uh, I don't get it. Um, he says, you're, you're Israel's teacher. Do you not understand these things? I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know. We testify what we have seen. But still you people do not accept our testimony. I've spoken to you of earthly things and you don't believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? Now Jesus is going to tell you why he's got the cred. He's got the street cred to tell you about heavenly things. And he says this, no one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. He's got the cred to tell you about, <laughs> about this kingdom because he's been there for eternity. And he's now here on earth. And this, we'll talk about this in the sermon. It, oh, I love this. This is so great. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. Beautiful. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him, what? Shall not perish, but have eternal life. You're never going to die. You know, you'd be sad about that. It'll be a blink, and then you're, you're here, then you're there. You don't die. For God did not send, this is important, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. This is good news, isn't it? And this is a gift to all of you. And as we look at, we are very interested in the kingdom and very interested in Jesus. Many years ago, I graduated early from college. I worked for a company that built roads. And so I know a little bit about asphalt, aggregate, and, and various kinds of things. And I could tell, talk about it all day because I find it very fascinating. But I ran this little this group of people, um, hardcore, blue-collar, strong, mean, opinionated folks. If, if you ever worked with blue, real blue, hard-muscled, hard hat wearing people. Anyone ever do that? You do that? Tom, what was it like? It was very interesting. <laughs> very. It was an aluminum melting plant. Oh, no kidding. Aluminum plant. Well. So aluminum melting plant in the summer. Yeah. I don't think I want that job. Well, here's what I learned with the, the people that work for me. I had a real problem with them, and it was all about the vending machine. <laughs> the vending machine was the biggest issue that I had. Well, not the biggest. It was one of them, because the real problem was this. The machine wasn't made correctly because the peanut M&Ms were always getting stuck. And the peanut M&Ms, they're in a bag that's not like a Snickers, it's not like a Payday, it's not like a Milky Way. They're, those are all solid things, and when the wheel goes, boom, the solid things comes out. But if, it's your, uh, if you're this package of M&Ms, peanut M&Ms, you can move a lot of different ways, and you get stuck. And here's what I had. I had my employees beating the machine. I mean, some of them were as big as the machine, and... And there would be marks on it. There would be like dents in it. There would be all. They were, they wanted what they wanted out of the machine. Have you ever been frustrated with a vending machine? Did you ever beat it with a crowbar? It was right there in the shop. They were the welding and everything else in this huge shop, and now you have a yard with all the equipment. Yeah, my problem was the vending machine, and I believe. That's a Christian's problem, too. When we look at God in a certain way, where we think, I should be getting what I want. And my statement to you today is this. Jesus is not a vending machine. And he doesn't appreciate you beating on him. At all. You see, we want our... Miracle. What, you know, think about your life now. What, what are you praying for? What are those things you want God to intervene in? What are you asking God for? We all have something we want. Amen? Something we're asking God for. 
something, a desire of our heart, right? It's there. We want a miracle. And, but Jesus wants us. We want this miracle. Jesus wants us. These are two different focuses. Uh, we want that. He wants the heart. Make sense? I want Jesus to blank. And I want you to fill, fill in this sentence for me, for yourself. What are you wanting Jesus to do? I want Jesus to, because I think we all have these desires. And no one's going to say it out loud. Okay, so no, you're not going to be embarrassed. And I never embarrass anyone. You know that. I want Jesus to blank. Now, we all have desires and needs, and we also believe that if I do blank, and if I do blank, then God will do blank for me. Am I right? If I just clean up my act, if I just start praying more, if I just start reading the Bible more, if I just start being a better person, then, you know, I think, I think that God is, I know that'll be part of it, then God will do this, right? It's this interactive thing that we think that God is going to respond to that I just want Jesus to blank and if I do this and I do this then God will do this that creates irritation see we're irritated because we believe that we've done all these things and God isn't answering our prayer why is God so so slow in answering our prayer amen and here's the thing you want the miracle God wants you those are two different things and between the miracle and between now, God wants you. And he wants your heart. He wants your life. He wants your attention. He wants you to be born again so you can see the kingdom, live in the kingdom. And then, in time, something's going to happen. Once you start living in the kingdom, though, your, your idea of, hey, I want this from Jesus can change. Amen? It can change. So, the Jews were in the desert with Moses. You know the story? They're out in the desert. They got all irritated. They get mad. And that's what Jesus is going to be talking to us about in the lesson today. They traveled from Mount Hor along the route to the Red Sea. They went around Edom. But the people grew impatient on the way. They spoke of what did they want to do? They wanted to get out of slavery, right? What did God do for them? Takes them out of slavery. Once God takes them out of slavery, what do they do? They complain. Okay. People grew impatient. They spoke against God and against Moses. They said, why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the desert? They, they're making a lot of stuff up. There's no bread. There's no water. And we detest this miserable food. They didn't like the manna. The purpose of any miracle or answered prayer is what? What is it? It's to bring me to Jesus before I get the answer. And they're struggling in the desert. They're all angry in the desert. And this is the way of God is moving them towards him before they get out of the desert. And they're in the desert a long time. The purpose of anything that God is doing in your life is to bring you to Jesus before you get the answer. Because you can't handle the answer until you have Jesus. Am I right? You can't handle it. So the whole thing of God, God is wanting to bring you to him. Now, Jesus knows the question that's under the surface. What The question that's down below. In reply, Jesus says, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they're born again. Underneath your real question of the miracle or what you're asking for is something deeper that you need to see the kingdom. And Jesus says this, you know what? No one that is, who is relying on themselves is ever going to see the kingdom of God. And it's all about seeing that kingdom and seeing God working. Blaise Pascal said, it's by the heart that God is perceived. It's not by reason. So that is what faith is. God perceived by what? By the heart. Not by reason. So what does that mean? It really means our only answer is Jesus. That's, that's the only answer. We're, a, we're, a great thing is happening this week at KFC. Double down. How many of you love KFC? How many of you are ready to have a heart attack? You can do it on March 8th. Double down. 
Scott Spore, I expect to hear a report from you on the sandwich, okay? Thank you. Double down. It's time to double down, but not on this sandwich and not on Jesus as a vending machine, but double down on the Son of Man lifted up. Jesus says this, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. And so let's go back to Numbers. So they're all ticked off about the food. They don't like the food. They're complaining about God, complaining about Moses, everything else. They travel to Mount Hor along the route of the Red Sea. They go around Edom. The people grow impatient, spoke against God. We don't like this food. And the Lord sent venomous snakes among them. They bit the people. Many Israelites died. The people came to Moses. They said, we've sinned against we, 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 we've sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray the Lord will take the snakes away from us. Right? We'd all be praying that. So Moses prayed for the people. The Lord said to Moses, make a snake, put it up on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can then look at it and live. And so Moses made a bronze snake, put it up on a pole. Then when anyone was bitten by a snake and looked at the bronze snake, they lived. And to go back to Jesus now, what did he say? Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. This is a beautiful connection to the Old Testament. And Jesus says, you know, I'm, I'm not the vending machine. I'm not. I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. There's so, so much more that I have for you than you just asking me for something. I've got a kingdom I want you to live in. And you're born again, and you've been given eyes to see it. All you have to do is open them up, maybe slow down, have a little more silence in your life, have a little more, hmm, what is God doing? Because between my, the miracle I'm asking for and now is going to be a beautiful thing that God is doing. I've been on an interesting journey in my life. I've been ordained in, in a Lutheran pastor almost 40 years. Three years ago, working with the leadership in the church said, you know what, by the time you're 65, we should probably just kick you to the curb. No, I mean, we should start thinking about, at 65 is probably a good, I mean, it's, it, it seemed right in my heart and right with the Lord to say, yeah, that, about 60, that seems about right to have a pastoral transition in a church, all right? And you all know we've been looking at this and working on it. And the fact that you're still here with me, I say thank you. Um, the fact that, you know, the, the, maybe you're here because it's like, we, thankfully, we're going to get someone good. All right, can't wait. Woo, we're going we're gonna to stay until that person comes. Okay, I love you all. Um, so, we started over, I mean, over a year ago in this process of, okay, we're going to be in this process of looking at people to come on in. And as you know, you know, during COVID, Pastor Mike went on to a different calling. Pastor Ryan has gone on to a different calling. And there's one man left standing. Okay. So, thank you, Sue. All right. So, the prayer has been, hey, Lord, we want to find someone who is a great addition to our church. We bring someone in that the choir is going to love, because they're tough. I mean, that choir's tough. They're going to love, and the organist is going to love. We've got the greatest organist in, in the world, and you, that you're going to love. And so we're like, okay, well, we're going to start talking. And oh, so we see the fruit that God gives us, and we talk to these people. And have you ever tried to fill a job or find someone to do something you don't, or maybe find someone to marry? Maybe that's a better one. It's like... You know, and you don't get exactly the right fit. Have you ever had that? And then you say, well, maybe I should just settle. You know, eh, not, that's not, eh, not the best I could do, but you know what? Better than nothing. And the call committee's like, no. No. They, they, they like talk to 20, 30 40, I don't know, a bunch of people. And so the process is going. 
It'll take another year, year and a half. When I'm 70, I'll keep, let, keep let, letting you know <laughs> how it's going. But it was very interesting because, um, so we started this process, and my heart, one thing that, that I'm interested in doing is um, helping churches with certain kinds of things. I have a certain academic background. Um, it's not just in theology and philosophy, but I have a, a, a degree in, from Pepperdine to business school and a master's of science in what's called organization development. And so uh, over the course of my life, I'm, I've always been working and fiddling around with things to help churches, to help other pastors, help, you know, um, just in my life. That's, that's like my hobby, okay? You know what I'm saying? It's not like, I'm, it, but I love it. I mean, I'm very interested in that. So um, my idea is, well, you know, um, when we find a really great leader for a good shepherd, I can spend time in volunteering and helping places that need help. So right, um, right after we, so we started the process of, you know, look, six months down the road looking for another pastor. I had a friend of mine call me up, say, hey, look, I know what you do in organization development. Here's what I'd like to do. I'd like you to work with me uh, and um, develop this with, within this large organization, very large, and it has to do with churches and non nonprofit people. Um, I said, wow, that would be great because I'm sure we're going we're gonna to have a pastor pretty soon and ba 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 I'm all pumped up. I'm like, okay, God's providing this for me. God's providing this for the church. Everything's going down the road. Everything's fantastic. Wow, you know, um, I got the miracle, got what I want, everything's great. And I realized this is taking a long time. And then you'll love this because it's, it's painful for me. I get an email from this person in this organization that runs this organization that goes out to all the people in the organization telling everyone that they have found someone to fill this position, which I had been offered the job. I said, you, I want you to work for me. Okay, I'll do it. And I get this email about this job, and there was someone else's name connected with it, and their picture, it's like, that. they're doing the job. I said, well, what is happening here? What is happening? And here's what's happening. Between my miracle and what I think God has for me, in between that and now is me just trusting Jesus and living with Jesus. And it's actually good to have the carpet pulled out from underneath you because all you have is Jesus then. I'm like, well, what about me? And the answer is, Jesus is going to show you. And all you can do is say, hey, Jesus is not the vending machine. As, uh, just as that snake is lifted up in the desert, we are healed, we are saved, we are given life by that in the Jewish community. So it is with Christ who's lifted up for us, giving us life. Do we have the answers? No. Do we have life? Yes. I want you to know that a vending machine was not lifted up on the cross. No. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who loves you, who cares for you, who has life for you. And the result is that everyone who believes him in him may have eternal life. That's the key. For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only Son, whoever believes in him shall not perish, but will have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. God is working in your life. You have been born again. You can see the kingdom. And when you see the kingdom, it's not about getting that thing, you know. You need to have something taken away from you. You need to receive that email. Ooh, I hated getting that email. <sighs> but it sure made me trust God. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, how is everything going to work out? Who knows? And the answer has to be, you got to be comfortable with that. Amen? And so it is with all, our, all of our lives. Jesus, thank you for your work in our lives.
Thank you for giving us the kingdom, giving us insight, and having us be born again. We claim that identity now, that we have been born to trust in you, to not be trusting in you as the vending machine, but you as life and life eternal for each of us here in this church and in the world. Use us, guide us, and direct us. And we ask that in your name. Amen. Please rise. Let's sing our hymn of the day. In this season of Lent, we will come together in prayer using an ancient form in the church. The Greek words Kyrie eleison mean Lord have mercy on us. The church has been chanting this during prayer since the early centuries of its existence. We will be led in various intercessions prayers in categories, followed by singing this simple chant as a response to each one. The repetition of this beautiful Kyrie is itself a prayer. God's mercy is a gift of love given freely to us. In this singing, we lift you up. Loving Creator, we come to you asking for strength to resist injustice in this world. You have created a world in which we are a global community, connected and interdependent. Show us how to love so that when one part of the human family is affected by hate, war, hunger, or disaster, we will move to right any wrongs and alleviate suffering for the sake of all. You have created a planet full of such wonder and diversity. Show us how to love this planet home as our precious dwelling, assuring the flourishing of all living things. In this singing, we lift up this world to you with our love. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Loving Sovereign, we come to you asking for strength to make a difference in our communities. 
you created us for beloved community, bringing what we can offer and honoring others for their contributions. You invite us to love our neighbors. Show us how to love more widely, more deeply, especially when others are hurting. We pray this day for Jeanette Peters, Inar Rasmussen, Nancy Ogden, Cindy Winther and family. God have mercy. In this singing, we lift up this community to you with our love. of our souls, we come to you asking for strength to love ourselves. In the beginning, you created us in your own image, giving us life and breath and the ability to love. And yet, we find it difficult sometimes to love what you have created, to believe that you called us good. Help us know the lure of your love for us, so that we may be your love in this world, in our communities, and in the lives with whom we intersect each day. God, have mercy. In this singing, we open ourselves to your love. Lord, have mercy. And so, as we are people following in the ways of your Son, Jesus, who set the pattern of love as resistance to the temptation of fleeting fame and fortune, we pray with confidence. In your name we pray. Amen. We will now receive our weekly tithes and offerings. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts of ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and give thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me.
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gift of God for the people of God. You may be seated. Come forward at the direction of the ushers, for all is now ready.
please rise. Let us pray. God, for whom we wait, in this meal you give us a foretaste of that day when the hungry will be fed with good things. Send us forth to make known your deeds and to proclaim the greatness of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Join us in our sending song. into the world looking for love in all the right places, we will look for the signs of the Helper, knowing that God is ever-present, urging our choice for love. Amen. Have a great week.